This is former Congressman Joe Dioguardi, the president of the Albanian American Civic League. I am speaking to you now from my home in May, May 10, 2019. But what you're about to see is an interview that I just discovered done by a reporter from Albania who came to visit me in my home in Scarsdale, New York, to interview me about the work that we had accomplished in the Albanian American Civic League for the benefit of Kosovo and Albania, mainly Kosovo. I wanted you to see this 30-minute interview because you'll hear the important questions that were asked of me by this reporter in English, and we will translate this in Albanian after it's completely finished. But these questions were so good, and I think my answers were perfect for the time and apply even today, that we must continue the work of the Albanian American Civic League as the only registered lobby for the Albanian people in Washington and really around the world, because what comes out of Washington seems to go everywhere. So it's important that you hear this today because this year is the 30th anniversary of the Albanian American Civic League, which we formed after I left Congress in January 1989. Remember, I was elected in November 1984, the first meeting with the Albanian people where they heard my father speaking Albanian was in September, on my birthday, September 20th, 1985, and that led to the first hearing for the Albanians in the former Yugoslavia in the fall of 1986, and then another hearing with many, many congressmen in the fall of 1987 when Milosevic became the president of Serbia and headed the Communist Party, and we knew there would be much greater troubles for the Albanian people in the former Yugoslavia. But we then switched when he invaded Kosovo in March of 1989 to doing everything for Kosovo, but we never forgot the Albanians in the other parts of Southeast Europe, you might call the Balkans, as you will see in how I answered the questions in the following. I guess the bottom line of this is that we must continue you must continue to support the Albanian American Civic League by becoming members of the League so we can continue to raise public awareness for who the Albanian people are and their difficult history in Southeast Europe and how, while we got independence for Kosovo, we still are looking for economic development and full democracy for Albanians everywhere in the Balkans, including the 3.5 million in Albania, the 2 million in Kosovo, the 1 million in Ma Macedonia, the 100,000 in Montenegro, hopefully 100,000 in Presheva as people are leaving, and even those Albanians in Chamria and in northern Greece. The work is not finished, as I said in the interview, Shum Poon, we have to continue, but we cannot do it without your support. Mr. Joe Diogati, your activity here in USA in support of Albanian matter in former Yugoslavia is known very well from Albanian radio, television, broadcasting system and the press. But we'd like to ask you an intimate question. Who are you? Well, first let me say how happy I am that you came to my home. Um, I've been to Albania now six times and uh, I expect to go back very shortly. But it's nice to be here with professionals from Albania, uh, now that Albania is free to do what it wants, so that we can tell the real story of the Albanian people. And I am proud to give my part of that story so that Albanians all over the world can be proud of who we are as a people. The most important thing to me is our national cause. You know, we have over 14 million Albanians around the world. I saw them in Melbourne, Australia. I saw them in Zurich, Switzerland. I saw them in Germany, in Malmo, Sweden, 
in Oslo, Norway. I saw them in Kosovo. I saw them in Macedonia. I saw them in Albania. We have been victims, the Albanian people, of history. Why? I don't know. But I know this. I'm proud to be Albanian because my father was proud to be Albanian. Un yam krana chayam chiptar. I'm an American. I'm born here in America, but I'm proud to say that my blood is Albanian, and I've done that all over the world. But especially I did that in Washington, in the Congress of the United States of America, because I wanted the American people to know that the Albanian roots, Ronjet, are so strong, they could survive 500 years, 500 years, the Arbresh, in Italy, and come to America to talk about the Albanians in Kosovo, the Albanians in Albania, and the Albanians in Macedonia, and the Albanians in Montenegro, and Presheva. All the country of Albania, as I see it, our nation, which is divided, unfortunately. So, who am I? To answer your question, uh, I'm someone who is very lucky. I am lucky that after 500 years, my father did not forget his great background, his great foundation as an Albanian, even though he was chased from his country, Albania, maybe Kosovo, we don't know where my father was, his people were, I should say he wasn't chased, his ancestors were chased, we don't know exactly, maybe Skodra, maybe Kosovo, uh, but they came to Italy but they never broke the faith with their people. Someone said this is Bessa Skanderbeg, where we have to now see what we can do for the nation. So I will continue as an American citizen to do what I can. Whether I am re-elected to Congress or not, I will continue to do all that I can as the president of the Albanian American Civic League, an independent organization of people who volunteer their time, who volunteer their ideas, their intellectual ideas, and who volunteer their money. Because in America, without money, you cannot communicate too well, and we have a complex story to tell. So I will continue to be a leader of this independent organization, as long as the people want me to speak for the Albanians everywhere, but especially in Albania, Kosovo, Macedonia, Montenegro, Presheva, because this is the Albanian motherland that was after the Turkish Empire went down. And this today is what we have to stand for as a nation. Six million Albanians in the Balkans. That is our national cause. We have to be proud of it. We have to work hard to be sure the world knows about it. And we have to make the other 8 million Albanians or more around the world, in Turkey, in Australia, in Greece, in Italy, all over Europe, know that we are working together. American national broadcasting system had transmitted long ago a program about Kosovo, where in this program they spoke about internationalizations of Kosovo matter <coughs> and to put forward at one solution. Nevertheless, is there anything that is stopping your activity in accomplishing our aim about our nationality cause comparable with the previous two years? And if so, could you please tell us why? A very good question. I see Kosovo as the Jerusalem of the Albanian people. You know, I've learned a lot about Albanian history as a congressman, and now after leaving Congress as president of the Albanian American Civic League, because many good intellectual scholars told me about my father's people, my people, what I didn't learn in school. Because in America, we don't study Eastern European history, Eastern European geography. But Kosovo is very important because that is where the battle for freedom of the Albanian people from what I have learned, started right after the League of uh, Berlin. We know what happened in prison, 
Tranitsa, uh, very important areas. And that's why when I went to visit Albania with Congressman Lantos in June of 1990, I went from Pristina to Prizren, to Kukus, down to Skodra, and then to Tirana, because I wanted the Albanian people to know that I had this sense of history, because someone told me that's how Skanderbeg came down. Now, the communist government wanted me to come through Struga, but I said, no, I would rather go that way, and they saw that I was insistent, so Congressman Lantos and I made this historic trip by car, first time in 51 years, U.S. officials from Pristina to Tirana. I want to continue to keep building that bridge. I started that bridge as president of the Albanian American Civic League in 1990 with Congressman Lantos. He wants to come back with me again soon. We have to continue building that bridge between Pristina and between uh, Tirana and also the bridge to America. That's how I see my role. Now the question you ask is, am I able to continue the work for Kosovo and our Albanian national cause the way we did it before? I think we're doing a very good job. Uh, we just had two radio shows. We have a radio show every week. I've done this now for four years, sponsored by the Albanian American Civic League. We call it a voice for the divided nation of six million Albanians in the Balkans. We used to call it a voice for Kosovo, but when Albania became free, we said now we have to speak for all the Albanian people. Now, we just had two shows where we reviewed the work of the Civic League in the last one year. And we did so much. Uh, we brought Peter Abnori uh, to Washington to meet with President uh, Clinton at the prayer breakfast. We brought him um, and his uh, delegation to New York and to Boston and Chicago to see all the Albanian people here. Uh, a few months before that, I went to Vlora. President Berisha invited me to be at Vlora uh, at the um, uh, celebration of the Flag Day of the Albanian people, and um, we then went to Macedonia to meet with uh, Gligorov and Andonov to let them know that the United States was watching. Uh, we also brought Paul Weyrich uh, to Macedonia a year ago, or I guess it was the beginning of 1992, to do the referendum for the autonomy of the Albanian people in Macedonia. Uh, we then brought Adam Damachi and Mark Krasnici to Washington to meet with Eagleburger last spring. Uh, in September, we brought Nevzat Halili to meet with Senator Pell and all the senators. So we continue to do the work, but are we doing enough? I don't think so. We have to do even more. We did a lot in the beginning, and people know that. The hearings in Washington, the rallies in Washington. And at, those, at that time, it was very important to do that. Should we do it again? Yes, I think we must. But are we doing something today? Yes, we're doing a lot. Are we doing enough? No. But in order to do more, we must work together. We must have a united voice for the Albanian people in Washington. Our story our issue is very complex. It's very difficult for the world to understand a nation that is divided. When you have three million people in Albania, two million in Kosovo, one million in Macedonia, 100,000 in Montenegro, tens of thousands in Presheva, people don't understand that. And the Serbs are very uh, tricky, devious, they lie and they have the propaganda machine, Tanyug, and they say, look at these Albanians, they came to Kosovo to move the Serbs out, and they're hurting the Serbs. So since the American people and most of the world doesn't understand the history, we have to work even harder to work against the Serbian propaganda. So in conclusion on this answer, we need to do more. I want to do more. I will continue to do all I can as an individual and as president of the Albanian American Civic League. But if President Berisha, Dr. Rogova, Nevzat Halili, uh, Mehmet Barti, all the leaders of the Albanian people get together and say, now, diaspora, you must work together with Bashk, Bashk Yemi Meshum, uh, Bashkin Ben Fuchia. When you work together, 
you then accomplish a lot. If the leaders say that, I will then do as much as I can to work with all the organizations, all the parties, all the Alba Albanian people around the world to create an international lobby for our people. And I think we can do it, but it has to start with the leaders over there in the Balkans getting together to give us that strong signal. As an American politician in the United States of America, what do you think? Would the Serbs, their aggressive activity, transfer to the South? I'm afraid the answer to that question is yes. We have seen a failed foreign policy of the United States of America. I gave a speech in front of the White House twice, once when President Bush was there and once when President Clinton. In front of the White House with President Bush, I said, shame on you, President Bush, for not standing for democracy in the Balkans, for not taking the aid away from Serbia, Yugoslavia at that time, before it started the war with Slovenia and Croatia and now Bosnia. Shame on you for trying to keep Yugoslavia together when these people wanted freedom and independence. As a matter of fact, it was Dr. Rogova who was the first one to organize the Albanian people or, or a big group of people in the Balkans for democracy. 700,000 Albanians threw away their Communist Party cards. That was back in 1989. And we've been trying to get that message across in Washington with the hearings. But President Bush, Barry Eagleburger, Baker, they did not see the importance of supporting the democracy, and they did not see how treacherous, how barbaric the Serbs could be with violence, and they made a big mistake in not stopping them early. But now we have President Clinton, and Clinton said during the campaign against President Bush, you're not doing enough. We need to do more for the people in the Balkans. We have to stop the Serbs. He now becomes president, and he's doing even less up until now than President Bush did. So I said in front of the White House again, shame on you, President Clinton, for promising so much. The Albanian people supported you because you promised us that you would fight for the self-determination of the Albanian people and all the people of the Balkans, and yet you didn't do it. So now what we have, look at Bosnia. The Serbs now see the weakness of our foreign policy here in the United States, the weakness of NATO, the weakness of the European community, of the United Nations, and they keep grabbing more and more land. They keep hurting the people with the raping and the maiming and the torturing. This is a very bad precedent for Kosovo because now just the way we gave Adolf Hitler all of the green lights when he went to Czechoslovakia and Poland, we gave Slobodan Milosevic and Karacic the same green lights. And now they are changing the borders by violence and with blood. And we always said we would not let that happen. So this is bad for Kosovo. And that's why we must be stronger in America today and around the world to tell the people what is going on in Kosovo, that the ethnic cleansing started there in 1989. It just didn't start now in Bosnia. It started in Kosovo when Milosevic went there in March of 1989 to have that big rally uh, about the Battle of Kosovo. People don't know that. So will it move to the south? I'm afraid it will unless we work together and work hard because Slobodan Milosevic built his political power in Kosovo. He told the Serbian people that Kosovo is the Jerusalem of Serbia. He lied to the world. He said the Albanian people are hurting the Serbian people when it was the opposite way around. He uses the propaganda machine of Tanyug and Politica. We now have to address that, and we have to do it soon. And we have to even protect the one million Albanians in Macedonia because it could be that Milosevic will use the excuse of the minority of Serbs in Macedonia to make something happen there so that he can indirectly then do more damage in Kosovo. So my answer is simply that I'm afraid that this battle will move south because the arrogance of the Serbs has been demonstrated 
and they have not yet been stopped. And we know that their real purpose in the beginning was not Croatia, was not Slovenia, was not uh, Bosnia, it was Kosovo, it was the Albanians. Don't forget, the Croatians, the Slovenians, the Bosnians, they are Slavic people. The Albanians are Indo-European people. If they could do damage to Slavic people, their own blood, can you imagine what they could do to the Albanians if they had a chance? But the Albanian American Civic League brought Senator Dole and six senators to Pristina. We brought Lantos to Pristina and we told Slobodan Milosevic, you have to be very careful what you do to the Albanian people because we are watching. That's why Slobodan Milosevic is very nervous about doing something, but he knows to survive in Belgrade, since he built his political power on violence and Albanian blood, in order to stay there, because the economy is in ruins, the reputation of the Serbian people is gone, he wants to create more blood in Kosovo, so now we have to be very careful. So I'm going to try my best as a proud Albanian, as an American politician, as president of the Albanian American Civic League, to do all I can to organize our people in order to stop the Serbs from hurting the Albanians in Kosovo and in Macedonia in Montenegro and Prishevo. We are hearing that you have been taking money from Albanians for the activity that you did and you are doing to protect a nationality matter. Have you ever heard and what can you say about it? You know, I'm glad you asked this question because it's important to speak about the truth. Thomas Jefferson said in America, one of our founding fathers, information is the currency of democracy, like money is the currency of a banking system. He said information is the currency of democracy. So if we want a strong democracy, if it's here in America or in Albania, we must talk, we must share information, facts, and we must be truthful with each other. People who say that I took money are people who are lying. These are people who want to get power they don't deserve. They saw what the Albanian American Civic League did for the Albanian people. They knew in 500 years we never had this kind of power before. And Albanians have this feeling that they want their families to go down into history or they want to go in history. This is good. This is competition. But they should do it by earning it themselves like I did for the Civic League, not by talking against me. Because when they talk against me, they help Milosevic. Milosevic likes to see the Albanians talking against each other. Now, did we need money in Washington? Yes, because to run the Albanian American Civic League in 1989, we needed three people working with me. They had to be paid a salary. I needed the expenses to travel to Washington. I live here in New York. We had an office in Washington. We had an office in New York. We had the hearings. We had to bring the people from Kosovo. We brought 15 people from Kosovo. That cost, I think, $40,000, just the airfare to bring Dr. Rogova, Lulia Tupula, Skelzin Milici, Recep Ciosia, Anton Cheta, and on, etc., etc. 15 people to the dark, the dinner at the Sheraton, and to the hearing. This takes money. Without money, you cannot do this. Then we had to raise more money to send Dole to Kosovo. Do you think six senators would go if we didn't support them? as politicians here for their election. This is the American way. So we have to understand the way America works. It's important to ask for money because without money, we cannot get our message across on television. We cannot bring the people here from Albania and Kosovo and Macedonia to testify. Uh, we cannot educate the world. We cannot have the trips from me to Albania. So and, and to Kosovo. There are many reasons for it, but the propaganda has to be watched because when people say ridiculous things like the Aguari is taking money, this is wrong because it gives the wrong idea that that money is being used by me personally. Absolutely not. It costs me and my family money to do what we are doing. And we will continue to do it because as I said, I am very lucky, I am very proud that history gave me this opportunity after 500 years to be at a place 
and a time to help my father's people, my people, so that the promise of Skanderbeg can continue, so that the seeds that he sowed when he went to Italy, when his son went to Italy in the year 1468, my father's village, Greci, in Italy started 1488. When Skanderbeg went there, he planted the seeds, and now the flowers are growing 500 years later so that those flowers can be the fruits for the Albanian people in order to achieve, after all these years, their self-determination, their independence, their democracy, and their strength as a nation of 14 million people around the world, 6 million of whom live in the Balkans today. How will uh, develop now and in the future your activity for this matter? We have to continue working very hard. There is a lot of work, shumpun, for the Albanian people. Um, and I will continue to do what I can to bring important people to Albania, to Macedonia, and Kosovo. They don't let me into Montenegro because the Serbs have passed a law that I am not welcome in Belgrade anymore. I went there three times, and I was thrown out of Belgrade when I gave a press conference there. And they passed a law that uh, I should not be let into Belgrade or Montenegro. But I will continue to go, if I can, to Kosovo. I went there just last year to Kachanik. Uh, maybe the Serbs won't let it happen again. But I know I can go to Macedonia, and I know I can go to Albania. And there I will speak, not only for Albanians in Albania and Macedonia, but Albanians in the Balkans. We have to do today something even more important than the work that I started in Congress. Because now Albania, our motherland, is a free democratic nation. Dr. Sally Berisha is a president, a democratic president of a free Albania. And it only happened in the last two years. This is very new. So what is the biggest challenge we face today for our national cause? I believe it's to make Albania economically strong, to build a good economic foundation in Albania, to bring in investment from the diaspora in Albania, and from Germany, and from Italy, and from America. I am working right now on an Albanian-American enterprise fund, and I'm working with Ambassador Bimo and, and others. I just met with Artan Hoxha. He came here to Chicago. So now one of my main priorities is to help Albania create jobs for the Albanian people, to create capital. Why? Because without jobs and without capital, democracy has very shallow roots. We saw this in South America with Nicaragua, how fast they went back to communism when the people were not able to work and they were not able to eat. We cannot let this happen in Albania. So we must do everything we can, and I will do everything I can with the Albanian American Civic League. I expect to go to Albania very shortly and to bring some important people there. Now, does that mean that we forget Kosovo? Absolutely not. We have to continue to expose Serbian chauvinism, Serbian arrogance, Serbian treachery, Serbian barbarism against the Albanian people in Kosovo and Montenegro and Macedonia. And I will continue to do that as well. So the work of the Albanian American Civic League and Joe Diaguardi and his family and his friends will continue for the Albanian people as long as I have any breath in my body, you can be sure that I will continue to do what I promised my father before he died, because my father was very happy to see me meet so many Albanian people when I was in Congress. And he died five years ago, and he said, you know, these are good people. These are our people. You have to do all you can to help them. And I said, Dad, you can be sure that I will do that, and I will continue to work as hard as I can. But if I have the cooperation of Sali Berisha, Ibrahim Rogova, Nevzat Halili, Mehmet Bardi, and all the leaders of the Albanian people with the position we have, the Civic League in Washington, and the contacts we have, and the power we've developed, nothing will stop the Albanian people. So it's now up to us. The real enemy is no longer Slobodan Milosevic. He has been exposed now for what he is. He is a barbarian. 
the Serbs have been exposed. They have lost their reputation. They've lost their economy. The big enemy we have now is ourselves. Are we ready to work together for the national cause of the Albanian people? There has never been a better time in history for us to accomplish that, but we cannot do it unless we join hands to work together with one voice for the great nation of the Albanian people in Washington, in the United Nations, and around the world. We're, we're in my home, but this is my office. This is where we started the Albanian American Civic League, and many meetings of the original board of the league happened right here. And I'm proud to have the various gifts that were given to me by the Albanian people uh, as I went on my, my many trips. Uh, you can see that uh, I have here uh, even the uh, various things uh, when I went. This is something that dedicates uh, the League of Prisoners because prison was so important. Yes, this is uh, uh, something that we made to show the Albanian Eagle because we're proud of Shaponia Shiptari. Um, then we have also made the Albanian Eagle in crystal and we gave a copy of this to uh, Ibrahim Rogova uh, and Tom Lantos at the, the dinner. In fact, we have one that's even better. I think we have a copy of it I'm going to show you. Um, uh, and we have uh, also pictures when I went to uh, Siranda in Albania. We have many pictures of Siranda. This is pictures of uh, Kosovo, and this is of Albania. And over here, well, we'll just put this here. Here we have the pictures from the trip, first trip to Albania, when we went across the border by car uh, with Tom Lantos. They opened the door for the first time in 51 years, uh, and we went through from Pristina to Tirana. And when we got to the uh, airport, uh, no, the Hotel Daiti, this is the beautiful young faces of the Albanian uh, children. Even though they are poor, we see they have much spirit, the Albanian children. And I wanted to bring these back to show America the spirit of the Albanian people, the future of the Albanian people, these kids, their future, you see? So we have that. Okay, just leave that there. Now, over here, well, right behind us, we have George Castriati, Skanderbeg, uh, and I think it's always important, especially for the Albrecht, to have uh, a picture uh, of George Castriati uh, in the house. And here I have things that I bought when I was in uh, Albania. Uh, Cheftali, they call this. <laughs> uh, and, uh, you know, various versions of the Albanian flag and, and other uh, medals that I, I, I have. So I have tried to... Oh, and this is important because when you go to Kosovo, you want to be sure that you have uh, this for the, uh, the Albanian people because this represents the spirit of the Albanian people, the hat that they wear uh, in the Balkans today. So I sometimes in the rallies wear this hat myself. I think I better take it off right now. Okay. So what else can we uh, show? This was made uh, especially as a gift for Senator Dole and Tom Lantos and Dr. Rigova in 1990 when we had the big dinner at the Sheraton. Uh, we made four of these. One stays here at the office of the Albanian American Civic League because we wanted something very special to show the connection between America and Albania and Kosovo. And we used the symbolism of the two great eagles, the American eagle, Shaponia Namarik, and the Albanian eagle, Shaponia Shiptari, to build a bridge between America and Albania. Uh, this is important for Kosovo, for freedom, but it's also important today for Albania, for the economic bridge that we need to build. So keeping this here in my house reminds me how I have to keep working hard for Albania and Kosovo to keep making these two eagles come together. Because I believe the American eagle will free the Albanian eagle in former Yugoslavia and Kosovo today. The American eagle will strengthen the Albanian eagle in Albania economically. 
today. So it's important that I remember this, and it's nice to know that this is in the office of Senator Dole, it's in the office of Tom Lantos, and Ibrahim Rogova has this in Pristina. This is the story of the Diaguardi family in America. It was a tribute to my mother and father for the work that they did as, as immigrants here in America. Uh, you could see my father in his uh, grocery store in the Bronx. Uh, you could see my mother with me and my sister and brother when we were smaller, uh, young children being raised in the Bronx. This is me when I was graduating high school in 1957. So it's just some pictures that uh, we're proud to have.